This is Snake. You're listening to the Kojima Productions Report with Ryan Payton. So pay attention. This is the Kojima Productions Report, and I'm here with Chris Zimmerman. I'm Ryan Payton. Uh, it's a new English trailer where we premiered, yeah, the, the, the four new boss characters. Um, the four new boss characters look fantastic and Creep, the way they move, out. they're just very, very dangerous yeah. and very creepy. Yeah. I think the players are going to get a real kick out of that. And very screwed up. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. we've always had boss characters that have had very dark pasts, but this one, uh, especially with this whole idea of PTSD, that these these beautiful women have become beasts basically because of war trauma. Yeah, Is there's that? a section where their stories are told and to actually imagine, you know, there are people out there that have had stories similar to those and mm-hmm. the things that happened to children in war and things like that. Yeah. Um, they did an excellent job capturing that and then adding on top of that the fact that they are so messed up that they've become these beasts mm-hmm. with the human inside of them. Right. It's just, um, it's really good. We are really going full circle in that we're bringing back a lot of things from MGS1 that these are called Crying Wolf or Raging Raven, and these are all, the, of course, the names of uh, MGS1 bosses. So there's a lot yeah, of that. Yeah, there's too. a lot of connection there. Mm-hmm. So we're having a lot of fun, you know, bringing back elements from all all the past games, including Portable Ops and MGS2 and MGS3. The fans of this game and the people that have been playing it since the beginning will have a lot of little treats mm-hmm. throughout, um, with you know quotations or things like that right. that uh, will remind them of playing the games in the past. And the challenge for me is to make sure that people that you know haven't played MGS MGS two four or five times over are going to understand all this stuff. And so we're going to be doing a couple of things to make sure that everybody's on the same page. You know that yeah. they're going to know exactly what these characters represent. And that's I think that's that's the toughest job I think moving forward is that uh, there's so so much fiction and so much history. And yet it stands alone as well. Yeah, I mean so. You could, yeah, go into this game as your first Metal Gear and, and, and still And it'll have still a really make sense and it'll still... Experience. But the people that have played before or are going to play before they play this one mm-hmm. will have extra treats. Yeah, I think so. I think in this particular game, um, it's a real good acting piece. You know, there's a lot of meat on the page for the actor to express and bring out. And I think we've done a, a pretty good job and we've had some performances that literally made me cry. Yeah, so go ahead, we'll, Ryan. Let's, let's talk about that let's for a minute. Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> now, my count... I've been, of course, I've been I can't tell you what scenes those were because right. they're towards the end. <laughs> right. Well, actually, there's some scenes, I think... Probably uh, at the beginning. Yeah, in, the, in the middle, too. <laughs> I mean, my, my, my Chris crying, uh, crying count is up to, I think, five Okay, now. I cried five times. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, and if you know what's coming up and an actor can do that to you and the, the material can do that to you, it's pretty good, mm-hmm. you know. I think there'll be a lot of Kleenex sold. <laughs> I hope so. And I, I, I don't know what that says about me, though, because I didn't cry once. Does well, that mean I've just got you're cold hearted? Right? Cold hearted. That's a, I've, I've heard that before, quite a few times Sorry. actually. <laughs> uh, this time we've been we've, we've been we've been sticking to the translation, of course, as we always do, but we've been very liberal in our in our in our edits, you know. Switching things around, making sure that the, the scenes flow as they should in a natural English conversation. Yeah. Whereas before, uh, it would have to, if, if the Japanese in, is, if the key word is at the beginning of the sentence, it should be at the beginning of the English section, sen- sentence, which isn't always natural. Which doesn't always make sense because it's a completely different, obviously a completely different language and intent is different. Right. And what the American listener is used to hearing, um, you know, to get a point across might sound completely different with the Japanese intent right? And or sound awkward mm-hmm. with the Japanese intent. But, yeah, we have had um, uh, one of our actresses uh, told us the other day that she didn't have enough room for the arrows for the number <laughs> of edits we did to one line. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we have to bloody up one page because, yeah, we're, 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 we're shifting stuff around. And this was something that, you know, bef- moving into MGS4, I was, I was having a lot of trouble, you know, making a decision about what... How are we going to approach this? Is this going to be a literal translation of the of the Japanese script? I mean, an exact 100% literal translation, or we're going to make this more viable or more, and more natural for English speakers. And uh, 
I think I'm 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 trying to approach this. Uh, I'm trying to get both actually. You know, it plays well for the American audience, and yet we have not really changed any important intent or any. No, we haven't. Anything. It's just there might be a slightly different word that, you know, yesterday I think was a. Uh, Beneath control or under, right? Beneath their control or under their control, mm-hmm. and um, you know it's just a matter of what sounds better to the American. Or human. even better, there was a line uh, today that we're going to re- retake next time that uh, David Hader comes in, and he hands somebody a gun and he says, "Good luck." Good luck, and that's that's the that was the translation. That's how it was translated. But you know, in that scene, it would be more natural for Snake to say. Take this. Here, take this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. And is that a literal translation of translation of the Japanese? Hell no. But you know, it it's, doesn't it, change the intent, no. and it just makes it more. Because this is quite controversial for a lot, especially for anime fans. I've heard, and for a lot some game fans, is that if it's not a literal translation, exact literal translation, they'll 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 discredit it. Poo poo it exactly. A little bit. And you know, I'm I'm. I'm done with that. You know, that's it's ridiculous. You you turn on you turn on the TV at late at night. You watch anime, and it, some of it sounds just completely ridiculous. ridiculous. And you know, <laughs> especially for me, because I know how the Japanese, you know, w- conversation flow goes. I know exactly what they're trying to say, and ha- this is how they're. It's a very literal translation. It doesn't sound natural. It sounds no, ridiculous. it doesn't. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped. I can't wait for people to yeah. to see more. And you know, it's not, you know, I, I'm not making excuses, but it's not fair when you when you get a, a trailer like, for example, the E3 trailer, and you're pulling. You're pulling lines from different parts parts of the game, and you're randomly. putting them together. Yes, yeah. almost random. Well, yeah, not it, not randomly because the trailer has its own intent, but right. they weren't recorded for the trailer. Exactly, and so that's sometimes frustrating for me because some people might complain that, oh, what, you know, Snake's too quiet here, or he doesn't, he sounds too old, or not old enough, or whatever. And one thing in the game, and this has been a challenge for us, is that we have to remember what part. If we're, you know, we jump around the script, right? We we, we go from. It's very difficult to keep track of where we are. Keep track of the storyline. The storyline on all the Metal Gear games has so many twists and turns that it's hard enough to keep track when you're reading it from beginning to end, let alone when you're jumping from level to level to level. Exactly. It's like, now, where are we now? And what's happened so far? As far as the timeline, how old? You know, who's who's done in who and all that (laughs) stuff? It's like, I still don't, (laughs) I still can't remember. Well, it's also that, you know, Snake Snake is is getting older, right? Right. And And his voice is changing. So we have to, not like a 12-year-old boy, in a different sense, <laughs> but uh, we have to remember where in the timeline we're recording this. Exactly. Because is it early on in the game right. or is it when the effects have uh, gotten worse? Mm-hmm. So this is a challenge that we've taken upon ourselves. This is not a direction from Japan. Um, but, you know, cool. it, it, does, it does, if you do notice some different changes in, in Snake's voice, depending on what, what's seen in the trailer, you know, that's the reason why. What's your favorite MGS4 performance that we've recorded so far? And we're almost done. Yeah, I don't have a favorite because I like so much of it. Mm-hmm. Um, one particular funny highlight is there's a scene early on where uh, Atacon is remembering his college days or something, <laughs> and everyone already knows what an otaku o- Atacon right. is. I almost said octagon. <laughs> Everybody does it. Everybody does that. (laughs) But what an otaku he is. And in this particular scene, he's talking about filling somebody's cubicles up with jelly beans. Christopher Randolph had us... Laughing so hard, we were like when on the he verge of crying. I was fine. That was one yeah, of the times Brian, I cried. Brian, you did cry. Yes. I saw you cry there. <laughs> <laughs> but the way he did it was so nerdy and so so perfectly nerdy. It was awesome. It's, yeah, it's he, hilarious. He really did a great job, and and that's just like one of the fun fun things that we've done. Um, another fun and interesting thing uh, that we've done, and another thing that was challenging and yet really satisfying to do were the beast voices mm-hmm. because. I guess I'm allowed to talk about this. Yeah, go ahead. But we, um, we announced them. We have two actors playing each beast simultaneously. So we have a female beauty, and there's how many in the four game? Of them. Four of them in the game. There's four female beauties, and they're from all different walks of life, all different parts of the world. 